Nestled inside deep, deep green, under bright, bright sun, there were a people living all together in homes made of reeds from the riverbank and fibers cleverly woven in. It was a tribe, a nation of people, with everyone represented, big, small, smart, dumb, generous, greedy, talented, happy, sad, and intellectual. They were the Buhera Barousi. They worshipped the divinity of the moon, Bomurambi, and lived, died, and left ancestors who eat, breathe, laugh, and love today in a place on the map called Zimbabwe. The honorable king of these proud, peace-loving people, father of one daughter and many sons, was lying inside his hut, too weak to walk out the door and take a look around. His devout and devoted daughter was in despair to see him looking so ready to die. Her name was Mela, and she loved her father with every curve of her heart. Beautiful fruits of the land, prayers of the heart, sweet notes of pipes and whistles, big drums, little drums, and talking drums had been offered on behalf of their respected leader. Every wise healer who had the knowledge of Mother Earth in her hands, the plants of the forest in her mind, the language of Bomurambi on her tongue, had been consulted. Mela couldn't enjoy life. Her father was always on her mind. She walked into the jungle one night carrying old age in her young, strong, and proud heart. She looked up at a shimmering crescent moon and called upon the merciful and enchanting Bomurambi, who always watches and waits for when she is needed. Suddenly, leaves started trembling in her radiant reflection and Mela heard a thought in her brain that wouldn't go away. You must go to the Python healer. Mela's heart started ticking faster. Her lungs started a new rhythm. She turned and squirmed and couldn't sleep just thinking of the dreaded Python healer. Her brothers had been there and tried to tell everyone about it, but couldn't on account of their teeth chattering so much from fright they couldn't say anything anyone could understand. When the sun came up, she hadn't slept for half a second. Still, before the first babe cried for milk, she filled her little elephant hide pouch with nuts and headed for the foot of the mountain. Through deepest jungle, ferns tickling her ears, rivers testing her strength, climbing over rocks, sleeping in strange groves, and looking the big animals in the bushes in the eye, she went. Bomarambi showed four different aspects of her face, and Mela wore scars from the journey on the soles of her feet. But she thought only of her father, clinging to life. Then she saw it, carved smack dab into the solid rock entrance of a deep, dark cave. A serpent spiral, the sign of the python healer. The thinnest crescent moon dimly lit the night sky. Well, before she couldn't sleep, now she could hardly breathe from fear. Only a double dose of love made, moved her to face the giant python healer in the darkness of his own cave. She took a deep breath for courage, another one for a little more, and a third one to chase a meek little sound from between her lips and hear it echo inside the cave. I have been sent to you by Bomorambi. I humbly beseech your mercy and beg you to cure my father, whose major malady has left us lost and deep in sorrow. The little birds all woke up and were waiting to see what would happen. The next second lasted longer than the four days it had taken to reach that fateful spot. Suddenly in the darkness, she saw a pair of slit eyes and heard a voice that straightened her hair and set her heart to fluttering like a hummingbird. Your bravest brothers have already seen my greatness and fled in terror. Aren't you afraid I might eat you and leave your beautiful bones? lying around my cave here? 
like my bones are rattling in their sockets trying to run away. But I've got this powerful beating in my heart called love making me stay great and respected by Thon Healer. I am sent by Bomu Rambi who answered my earnest prayers. You and your greatness can do what no one else can for a man who no one talks bad about and is too young to die. is more powerful and mighty than your fear of me. Would you be willing to turn your back and allow me to slide right up to you? Mella had no time to waste wondering what was on his mind. She turned without a word and peered into the darkness of the watchful and waiting jungle. More powerful than your fear of me. Would you allow me to wrap myself around you as I would if I were going to eat you for my dinner? All the little animals she had greeted along the way started calling to Mella, cheeping, whistling, and snorting warnings that she was in a no win situation. She stood still as a pillar of stone, while Python Healer wrapped his giant body around her little frame. Together they looked like an alien beast with long legs and a pretty face. Well, Python Healer had eaten more than 10,000 delicious dinners in his life, but Mella stood straight and started walking back to her father. She had to dip deep down into a place in her soul she didn't even know existed to find the strength. When she pulled the dipper out, she found a song. Mella started singing and walking. The bird spread the word, and soon all the animals turned out to sing in the chorus of an improvisational four moon concert. Well, the wild night sounds had everyone back in their huts feeling a little jumpy, wondering what was going on out there, who would lead them, and where was Mella? Meanwhile, Mella's brothers, were having a private hang-up in the woods over who would wear his father's shoes when the beast with the long legs and the pretty face appeared. Well, the brothers ran for their arrows and spears and went to stop the beast who was heading for their father's hut. But then the beast started talking, and the people listened. It's little old me, Mella, inside the mighty python healer. Whatever you do, don't hang us up now. I've just barely made it to bring my father what he needs the most. Well, you could have heard a nut fall off a tree as far away as the mountain. Old eyes, middle-aged eyes, and baby eyes followed Mella and Python Healer into the hut. Soon, they smelled a strange and soothing perfume in the air. And they heard a song so old they had forgotten it even in their subconscious minds. Well, Mella did every little thing Python Healer instructed her to do, but still, her hair curled back up when her father popped up, strolled to his door, and took a look around. He was grateful for such a simple pleasure after many moons of misery and offered exquisite gifts, delicious foods, and exciting rhythms in thanks. But Python Healer had done what he had come to do and didn't have anything more to say, not even one word. The time to go was now, and Mella knew it. So while everyone feasted, Mella slithered away, allowed Python Healer to wrap himself around her and carried him back to his damp, dark cave. Well, the whole time Python Healer was hitching his ride, he didn't say one word to Mella, not one little sound even. But now, he invited her into his cave. Well, the little bird started telling her that just because she trusted him once didn't mean she should trust him twice. After all, a snake is a snake and a hungry one needs to eat. But fear was like an old friend now to Mella. The kind you ignore sometimes when he starts telling you the same old story you heard many times before. She took three steps into the darkness and saw a glowing light. She was sure she would see skeletons laying around the floor and she wasn't sure she wanted to see them. 
But she opened her eyes and saw pots of gold and silver, baskets of ebony and ivory, jewels cut to perfection and intricate tapestries woven with silken threads. Mella was amazed. But her wig really got turned around when Python Healer told her to take what she wanted because her courage and love should surely be rewarded. Mella thought it was Python Healer who should be rewarded. But she didn't want to disagree, and she obviously couldn't offer him anything he didn't already have. So finally, she asked Python Healer to pick a gift for her. And without even hesitating for a second, he laid on her a golden crescent moon hanging on a golden chain. Well, now Mella knew for sure that Python Healer was her friend. The symbol matched the one she always wore and had touched to call upon the merciful Bomurambi. Her brothers were jealous right away to see her walk so tall and proud. Greed came in through the front door of their hearts and spoke right to their minds. Soon, they got to thinking that if Python Healer happened to disappear, they could take his treasures. Next, they got to talking about it. Mella heard them whispering and couldn't believe what her ears were telling her. They wanted to knock off the healer who would return their father to them. She ran to the sign of the spiral to warn her friend and apologize for being part of the same treacherous family. And she waited for Python Healer to speak, but he didn't. When the brothers arrived, they were greeted by a few loud explosions, puffs of weird smelling colored smoke and a hologram of the monster of their nightmares. They ran all the way home and tried to join everyone for dinner like nothing had happened. But Mella had grown strong carrying Python Healer and got there before they did. Now in those days, if you couldn't live by the law, then you had to make it in the jungle for the rest of your life. And that's what happened to Mella's brothers. Mella's father lived to see Mella's kids have kids. And when he finally passed on peacefully, the people unanimously appointed Mela as their queen. Queen Mela led the proud Buhera Barrausi with wisdom and courage for many, many moons. When she needed two heads instead of one, she consulted her wise friend. So it was Queen Mela who arranged for the exquisite ebony likeness of Python Healer to be made and stand in the center of the village as a reminder to everyone. Python Healer, the one who knows the magic of the crescent moon of Bomurambi and cares for those who live with courage, honesty, and love.